name is Andy, sometimes Mouse. I talk about books and book related things. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I am voting in the Goodreads Best Books of 2022, the Goodreads Choice Awards, um, the opening round because we're not in the final round yet. I am voting in the opening round. It ends in five days. I just thought that we could have a quick fun little video where I do those votes. I know I did it in a vlog last year. Um, I've figured out how to screen record shocking to everyone involved um, that I figured that out. Congrats to me. Um, but I am going to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start voting for that. I don't have a whole lot of, um, I've, I've tried to keep myself spoiler free on this. So, um, so we are going to, we're going to start with best fiction and go from there. So let me get my screen recorder up. Okay. For best fiction, we have Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult, which I didn't read. Wish You Were Here by Jodi Picoult, didn't read. Uh, the Winners by Frederick Backman, no idea what that is. Um, Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, no idea what that is. Are there any books that I know what, what they are um, on this? No. I don't know any of the books in general fiction. That's great. Um, that seems very on par with, with my reading. Um, I know some of the authors. But I do not know uh, any of the books. It's not really a book genre that I read, so we're gonna skip this one because I don't think it's fair to vote on books I haven't read. So for best mystery and thriller, we have Jackal by Erin E. Adams. Never read that before. We have The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. Never read that. The Overnight Guest, which I just finished by um, Heather Gutenkopf which was really good. Um, that is a book, um, I think she's the lady who wrote The Room, uh, which I didn't read, but I, I've seen the movie and it was really good, so, you know. Um, so right now that's probably my highest pick. Uh, more books I've never read. Ruth Ware and Jillian McAllister are both good authors, but I've never read either of those books, Wrong Place at the Wrong Time and The It Girl. I would like to, but I've not read them. Um, Alice Feeney, I've never read, I think. And then Lucy Foley, I don't like. Night Shift by Alex Finley, I've never read, but it looks interesting. Um, Killers of a Certain Age, I've never read, but it looks interesting. The Family Remains, Art Set was really, really good. Um, haven't read it, obviously, but I want to. The Maid by Nita Prose. I dnf to that book because the naivete and the autistic coding without openly talking about the autistic coding of the main character felt shitty to me. So um, I don't know, I'm not autistic, so maybe it's not really my place to say, but I didn't appreciate that. But we're going to vote for The Overnight Guest because it's um, one I really enjoyed and two, the book that I've read on this list. So voted. Okay. And now we're going to go to historical fiction, which I doubt I've seen any of or read any of, but we'll take a look anyway. Let's see. So far, never read any of these. I know some of the authors though, Diane Chamberlain, I know of. I know Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, Nope, don't know any of these books, so we're gonna go ahead and skip to the next fun fantasy. Now this is more of my, this is, this is where things get tricky because I know some of these books. Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sulin Tan was a uh, beautiful, it was beautiful. Um, Babel by R.F. Kuang, I finished it yesterday, also beautiful. Electra by Jennifer Saint, I enjoyed, but I do not think it was her best. I think Ariadne was considerably better. A River Enchanted fucked me up. It was very, very good. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baltry. A really good comfort read. Really, really good comfort read. Now Lem Bone by T. T Kingfisher it was good, but I've definitely read better from T. Kingfisher. Um, and then Atlas Six was fantastic, but what do you vote for? Um, okay, so Legends and Lattes was very good, but it is mostly a comfort read. Um, I would not necessarily put it at like the peak of fantasy for me. Babel, also very good, but I don't think of it when I think of fantasy. And I know it has magic elements to it. Unfortunately, I just don't think of it when I think of fantasy. Daughter of the Moon Goddess was good, but I would not put it as the top for me. 
So that leaves us with A River Enchanted and The Atlas Six. Uh, and I'm gonna have to go with The Atlas Six because the vibes are right, you know? The vibes are correct, so we're gonna vote on that. And next category is Romance. Again, this one, I'm gonna doubt that I have. Ugh, the amount of Colleen Hoover, already annoying. Colleen Hoover's not a good person, y'all. Um... Nope, I don't know any of these. I haven't even read Electric Idol by Katie Robert yet, and I really like Katie Robert's writing, so we are going to go ahead and skip to science fiction. Oh, mm, this one's gonna be tough. All right, we've got Nona the Ninth uh, by Tamsin Muir, which was incredible. I would probably say that it is my favorite um, Ninth House book. We've got the Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. Really, really good. Really, really good. The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia was good, but I'm not going to say that I would put it as a high contender here. Uh, Leech, I just finished. Also really, really good. Um, you know, I would class Leech as horror, not sci-fi. Yeah, Leech would definitely be horror for me, not sci-fi. I mean, I guess it's sci-fi, but I would... I. It, was a lot of horror. So I'm gonna take that out of a contender because I don't think that it's sci-fi. So that leaves us with Nona Kaiju and the Daughter of Dr. Maru, Moreau. I would not count the doctor, Daughter of Dr. Moreau. Again, I would think that was horror, not sci-fi, but anyway. Um, so that just leaves Nona and Kaiju, and Nona was... I enjoyed Nona considerably more than Kaiju Preservation Society. Kaiju Preservation Society was good, but Nona is gonna get my vote. Moving on to horror, Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed made me angry. <laughs> I DNF'd that book because of the lack of adequate trigger warnings. And also, while I love horror, don't get me wrong, also I've already seen what I'm going to vote for. Um, I love horror, don't get me wrong, but I feel like that was shock for the sake of shock and not for plot and it got so overwhelmingly dark with no reprieve and no plot that it was like what am I what is the point and why am I reading this so I did not enjoy that <sighs> um we have House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson is more than likely what I'm gonna vote for um, but we also have What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher which was good Again, not T. Kingfisher's best, but good. Just Like Mother by Anne Heltzel was fucking weird. It was good, but whoa, was that weird. It was a really weird book. I read it as an advanced reader copy. Most of these I read as an advanced reader copy, and it was really weird. We're gonna do House of Hunger, though, because that book... All My Vampire Dreams. Next category is Humor which I doubt I know any <clears throat> any books, but we'll see. We'll take a look. And that's going to be a no. I don't know any of those. So moving on. We have our next section. <clears throat> we have best nonfiction. Um, I, so okay, I do read a lot of nonfiction. I don't think that the books that I read are going to be on here. I'm kind of shocked that maybe it's okay it's because memoir and biography and stuff are different sections. I was going to say I'm kind of shocked that um the Jeanette McCurdy book isn't on here but it's because it's going to be later. Uh, I've never read any of these books so. The best memoir and autobiography. Uh, the Viola Davis one was good, but obviously I'm going to vote for I'm Glad My Mom Died because it was fucking fantastic. And I hope it wins. History and Biography? Mm, this is probably not something I've read any of, but we'll see. Because you never know. Nope, never read any of those. Graphic Novels and Comics. This is a lot of me being like, never read any of these. Mm, Lore Olympus is good. And I've read it. <laughs> Heartstopper, good. And I've read it. I guess I read like predominantly queer comics and so I don't 
see a lot of those on here. Um, but we're going to go with Laura Olympus. Next is poetry, which I don't know any of. I already know I don't know any of. I haven't even looked at it yet, and I don't know any of them. Correct. And then debut novel. I didn't realize Daughter of the Moon Goddess was a debut novel. Anyway. Our Wives Under the Sea seems like something I want to read, but I don't know. We're going to vote for Daughter of the Moon Goddess, though, because one, it's one I've read and I enjoyed. Um... And that's it. That's all you need to know. Is Daughters and Oh, are I Wives Under the Sea? What, what is this? I want to hit it as want to read, just because it seems interesting. Okay, on to the next young adult fiction, which I have strong opinions of, but we'll see what we get in here. I'm very proud to see how Follow With Us has made it. That makes me very excited. Um, she Gets the Girl was good. You'll Be the Death of Me I haven't read yet. The Lesbianist Guide to Catholic School I haven't read yet, but I want to. Ophelia, after all, I read, but, and it was fine. It was fine. Nothing more to tell. Haven't read. Uh, Loveless is not that new to me. Anyway, I Kiss Cher Wheeler. Very cute, very cute. I'm very glad that that made it there. Final Gambit was an incredible book. Anatomy Love Story was a really good book. I guess I forgot that it's a young adult book. I thought it was an adult book. Um, hmm. So for me, it's between The Final Gambit, I Kiss Cheryl Wheeler, and Help Follow With Us. Help Follow With Us was really good horror. Um, I Kiss Cheryl Wheeler was really good contemporary. And The Final Gambit was an incredible kind of conclusion to a series. I don't think that the third book in a series should... I say that, but I voted for Nona. I don't think that the third book in a series should be on the Goodreads Choice Awards because, like, you have to have read the other books for it to... And there's some, some weight that's required there, right? Um, but I guess Cher Wheeler was incredible, so I'm gonna have to vote for it. I've read it twice now, I think. So let's do fantasy and science fiction young adult fantasy and science fiction. I hate that they combine these because I would put these very much in different. <sighs> Kingdom of the Feared, fuck y'all. Um, we've got Cytonic, um, This Woven Kingdom, Gallant. I did not enjoy Gallant all that much, I think. Will it show me if I, yeah. No, I voted, I wrote it, rated it, voted it, rated it two stars. Some Bear Trials I just finished and it was okay. A Magic Steeped in Poison was very disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. Cursed I haven't read yet. Is that even out? Is Cursed even out yet? Oh, I guess it is. Hmm. Anyway, Belladonna I read and it was fine. Um, The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea I didn't read. Uh, Bloodmarked I am gonna read, but I haven't read yet. So that really is limiting here. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Cytonic, even though I just went on that spiel about the final gambit. I'm gonna go with Cytonic because um, I think those books are incredible. I think that the that series is incredible. Middle grade and children. Let's see what we got. Amari and the Great Game is probably gonna win. Although Aru Shaw and Zachary uh, Ying were incredible. I'm kind of surprised that the Pennymores are on here. Um, not that it was a bad book. It just wasn't. I've. It, it wasn't the bestest. Which links was super super good. Mm, this is gonna be tough. Why am I gonna have a hardest the hardest time with middle grade? I didn't expect that. Okay, um, so let's see. Let me narrow it down. Arusha was good, but would I class it as the greatest in this list? No. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off in my head. Uh, Zachary Ying and Amari and what was the third one? Witchlings are kind of what we're down to. Zachary Ying, Amari, and the Witchlings. Zachary Ying was good, but could I tell you anything about the book now? No. So now we're between Amari and the Witchlings. I think I'm going to go with the Witchlings because it... Amari and the Great Game feels like it could be young adult, not middle grade. And that's my reasoning. <laughs> I know that that is like not the best reason, but that's my reason. And that's it. That is all of the voting. That is, we're done voting. I've now voted on the things and um, I'm gonna stop the screen recording. So that's it. I have officially voted on the Goodreads 
choice awards in the opening round. In five days I will vote in the final choice round. I'm gonna be irritated. I already know I'm gonna be irritated, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry that it was just kind of last minute and short and sweet, but I wanted to, um, I wanted to get a video out and talk about the voting and the process that I have, my process of elimination here. Um, I do think the Goodreads Choice Awards is rigged, and that's all I have to say about that. I hope that I will see you guys next week. I post videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, 99% of the time. Life is hard sometimes, right? Um, but I will catch you guys next week. Um, don't forget to take your meds, drink your water, and do something today to take care of yourselves. Okay, thanks. Bye.